Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown, and today we're going to take a look at the KB Lake version of the Alienware 17R4. Now, you may already know I did review the Skylake version. If you hadn't seen that, uh, please click here. And, but if you didn't know it before, that ran very, very hot and it had serious throttling. Now, Alienware did take action, improve the pressure on the CPU heatsink, and change the thermal paste. Um, so I wanted to see how this uh, baby would get on. So uh, Alienware have created a beautiful piece of laptop art with the uh, soft touch uh, wrist area, which they incorporated a new uh, finishing process to reduce the fingerprint smudges. Uh, it's also got very sexy side lighting and the uh, Alienware head uh, lights up as well as the, the keyboard and, uh, and the trackpad. It is a solidly built machine. It uh, weighs around about 9.1 pounds and it uses uh, anodized uh, aluminum on the lid. Uh, it's got uh, magnesium alloy chassis and it's got steel reinforced casing beneath the keyboard to give it little to no flex. It, it may be about an uh, inch and a quarter uh, thick, but it uh, does command a large footprint due to its uh, hinge forward design here. It's about 13 inches deep and 16 and three quarter inches long. Now that hinge forward design does allow it to put extra bigger heat sinks uh, in the back there. Now cool air is drawn in from underneath through a large vent where two fans are located. Unfortunately, the feet are very small. So the, the air gap underneath the laptop is, is small. Um, so lifting the rear end up, say using a book or something, does help to some degree. Now on the left hand side, we have a CPU and two heat sinks where hot air is expelled. And on the right hand side for the GPU, we actually only have one heat sink at the back with no hot air exhausted sideways where your, your mouse hand would be, typically, if you're right-handed, of course. Now, taking a look inside, you do have a, a one terabyte 7,200 RPM hard drive, and uh, the occupied SSD slot is an M.2 PCI Express NVMe made by Hynix, a 256 gigabyte. It has a read speed of 1500 megabytes per second and a write speed of 400 megabytes per second. You do have two spare SSD slots, one half size slot, which is strange, and a, a full size. It can be configured with a maximum of 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM uh, in the available two slots. Now my sticks are 2400 megahertz, but you can uh, configure them to 2667. The Wi-Fi in this model is killer 1435 and it is terrible. Losing connection, downloading large files like games. Um, even when uh, the uh, killer software showed there was a signal, it still would drop. So that was terrible. Regular web browsing was fine, so but you might want to uh, upgrade and get the killer 1535 or replace it entirely with an Intel one. Now these new Alienware laptops have some good uh, presence detection uh, uh, features, including facial recognition using uh, the, the camera for Windows Hello. It also allows you to uh, dim the lighting and screen when you're not in front of the laptop. And it also allows you to put the computer to sleep or, or wake it up. Now the Toby eye tracking can be used in games, um, but uh, I still think it, uh, it's, it's not quite ready for uh, prime time. Um, so uh, looking up at the top of the screen, for instance, uh, was, uh, was a little bit difficult. Now the screen on, uh, on this model is a QHD 2560 by 1440 TN panel G-Sync with a buttery smooth 120 hertz refresh rate and games look fantastic. It has decent uh, viewing angles, uh, both uh, indoors and outdoors. And uh, the panel is actually quite bright. Um, it has um, a color accuracy of 65% of NTSC, 70% of Adobe RGB and 92% of sRGB. Now, despite its large size, there are not that many ports. On the left hand side, you have a Noble Lock, a USB type C, a USB Type A 3.0 port and separate headphone and microphone ports. On the right hand side, you only have one USB Type A 3.0 port. Now you do have that vent there on the right hand side. Um, it's a shame you can't put perhaps another USB port in that location. Now there are more ports on the rear, thank goodness. You have an Ethernet, a mini display port 1.2, and kudos to Alienware and HDMI 2.0 so you can get 60Hz uh, at 4K a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C port, a power jack, and finally, the graphics amplifier port. Now I will be doing a complete analysis on the amplifier in my next video, so stay tuned for that one. I did try hooking it up to my 1080 Ti, and although it was recognized in Device Manager, 
Once it was uh, restarted to finish the driver install, the laptop uh, boot manager was totally, totally gone. So I had to uh, do a full system reset to get going. And I tried it twice. So be careful if you were uh, gonna do that. Now the trackpad is uh, very good. I like it. Um, the uh, has separate mouse buttons, which are very good and responsive. It has very good uh, scrolling and pinch to zoom. And it even, uh, it even lights up. The keyboard too is, uh, is very nice with a separate uh, number pad and uh, five macro keys on the left hand side. Now using software, you can configure these to open applications using Alien Tact X. You do have uh, volume controls and screen brightness controls, but there's no keys to alter the key brightness. You have to use the mouse and select the uh, Alienware FX options and uh, change it to go dark or dim the lighting zones, etc. Now you do have a color wheel in the software which you can use to change the, the zones of 11 different actually zones uh, to, to change. Um, or you can actually uh, use uh, one of their presets they, presets they have there. You do have Alien, uh, Alien Adrenaline that allows you to select a series of actions when you start a game, which, which is very nice. Performance monitoring is available as well as the status of the graphics amplifier. Now audio is controlled, controlled through the sound software as well. Now it's exactly the same as the Nahimic software used by uh, MSI. It is good and does, it does help boost the quality of the audio, giving around about 82 decibels. Now I do like the 1080p webcam. The webcam has always been excellent on the Alienware, so this is what it looks like and sounds like. I also like the fan noise at idle. The CPU fan spins at 1600 RPM and the GPU at 1800 RPM. So it's nice and quiet at about 21 decibels. At max load or your turbo fan, they spin at 7000 RPM. But still, they're fairly quiet at 46 decibels. But do they do a good job? Let's uh, see in a bit. Looking at the chassis temperatures, 27 degrees on the trackpad. 35 degrees on AWS D keys, 30 degrees on the number pad. Looking underneath, about 49 degrees to about 30 degrees. Now the max battery size you get in a laptop is 99 watt hours, and that's what you get in, uh, in this. So let's take a look at the battery life. You get three hours, 45 minutes, and that's more than the 6820 model. Unfortunately, you cannot switch to integrated graphics with a QHD panel without getting uh, this, uh, this error here. It still beats out the uh, ASUS G701VI, but loses out to the MSI GT73VR because that can switch to integrated graphics. Gaming, however, was fantastic. I got one hour, 50 minutes, uh, which is great, and undervolting it also increased it by 15 minutes, so you can't go wrong there. So let's take a look at how it gets on against the previous Skylake model, the ASUS G701VI, and uh, the Skylake MSI GT73VR. The 1080p, uh, the 1080 in this laptop overclocked like a champ. Uh, I got extra 190 hertz on the core and look at that memory, maxed out. I've never seen that before. So in Battlefield 1 at 1080p, there may be only 10% between them. The Asus in purple coming out on top. The Alienware 17 in red beat its outgoing model by 5%. This advantage widened uh, at uh, the QHD resolution by 15%. This is fantastic. And even though the CPU temperature was 96 degrees, it maintained high clock, clock speeds compared to the i7-6820 model, which throttled. In Grand Theft Auto 5, the ASUS G701VI in purple leads the way again. But once everything is overclocked, that pack does get tightened up, and then UK be like uh, Alienware again it beats the 6820 model by about 3 to 5%. Now, stock temperatures are quite good at 83 degrees, but when you overclock, even with that turbo fan on, you get 95 degrees. Even though it still throttles, it does maintain a high performance, again, unlike the Skylake model. Of course, this is at 1080p, which is more CPU dependent. So let's look at QHD. Now with no overclock, the higher turbo boost really helps the KB Lake. But overclock and we get the same performance. Temperatures are the same at, uh, 10, uh, as 1080p, hot when overclocked. Now, moving on to Metro Last Light, at 1080p, we see the same trend. The ASUS G701VI taking the lead and the KB Lake Alienware beating the 6820 at stock. Now, the KB Lake Alienware didn't do so well when overclocked. Here, it gets 125 FPS versus the others, which are around about 135 FPS mark. 
This is probably uh, due to the high 98 degree temperature that uh, I saw. Now, even at stock, it is hot at 92 degrees. Switching to QHD, the results between the Sky Lake and the KV Lake um, are very close. What is interesting here is that uh, using a cooling pad, the CPU temperature is reduced from uh, 99 degrees to 93 degrees and the GPU from 75 to 62. Whilst gaming gains an extra 4% in performance, so we can't complain about that. So let's have a look at Rainbow Six Siege. At QHD, we see good frame rates approaching the 60 uh, FPS mark. Overclocking sees 5% gains at the expense of temperature, which is 97 degrees with the turbo fan activated. Use a cooling pad, this drops down to 92, the GPU sees a nice temperature drop to about uh, from 63 to 57 degrees. With Tomb Raider at 1080p, we see the Cable Lake Alienware lead the pack in red, just pipping the ASUS at stock settings. Overclocking saw minimal gains, uh, apart from the MSI GT73 VR. Stock temperatures at uh, 90 degrees is fine, I guess, but overclocking gain we see close to 100. At QHD, overclocking saw 7% gain as we became more GPU dependent. Look at the temperatures at stock. We are fine at, 90, at 89 degrees. Overclocking, as usual, saw 98, but using a cooling pad, brought the CPU down to 78. And the GPU actually down by 14 degrees. This tells me that perhaps it's not just the pace that uh, being used is the problem, but um, the amount of air those fans can bring in. And I'm sure those small feet don't help either. Now, our last game is Witcher 3. At 1080p, we see identical performance. It's worthwhile overclocking uh, in this game with a 10% uh, improvement. Stock temperature is uh, 88 degrees, and this was fine, but it gained hot when overclocked. At QHD, I saw a big bump in performance on the overclocked uh, KB Lake over the Sky Lake, beating it by 12%. Now, out of all the synthetic tests, Time Spy is a killer. And I really do recommend that uh, you use that to test your own temperatures. The ASUS G701VI again comes out on top with, uh, uh, with the Cable Lake Alienware not that far behind. The Sky Lake Alienware comes in last because of its uh, serious throttling issues. Now, let's take a look at the temperatures. Even stock speeds, it is not at 94 degrees. Overclocked to 4 gigahertz and putting a book under, reduced the temperatures by 3 degrees. Increasing the clock speed to 4.4 gigahertz, still sort of crazy 98 degrees, but look at that fantastic score of 7,179. That shows that even when it throttles, it maintains really good speeds. Cinebench uh, multi-thread CPU test. At stock, it scored 761 points at a temperature of 83 degrees. Overclocked to 4.2, it scored 892 at 92 degrees, and it left the Skylake Alienware in the dust. Crank it up to 4.4 gigahertz and using the cooler, we got 940 points, which is close to the ASUS temperature at 93 degrees. My handbrake test encodes a four gigabyte uh, file to MP4, and it's a good test to show what real life temperatures would be like. Stock temperatures are fine at 82 degrees, but the encoding time was shocking at 46 minutes, 23 seconds. That was even slower than the i7-7700HQ I tested in the Acer Predator 17X. Now, overclocking, however, produced a very fast result of about 36 minutes, even beating the ASUS G701VI and demolishing the Skylake Alienware. The CPU pulled 78 watts when overclocked, and despite the high temperature of 96 degrees, it maintains that uh, power draw to keep the speed up. So let's look at the average CPU temperatures. Both at stock and overclock, both the Skylake and Cable Lake Alienwares were the same. Stock at 89 degrees is manageable, but overclocked at 97 requires some work to bring that temperature down, either by using a cooling pad, raising the back end, or repasting, or even undervolting. So let's have a look at the effect of uh, undervolting. At stock speeds, an undervolt of 0.145 millivolts is stable and reduces the CPU temperatures from 94 degrees to 79, which I think is fantastic. At 4.2 gigahertz, we saw a four degree reduction using an undervolt of 0.1 millivolt. This, however, does show that undervolting alone will not solve the overclocked temperatures. So either a cooling pad or repaste should also be used. At idle, the laptop sips 35 watts, which is great, and at low, 228 watts. Overclocking brings that up to about 270 watts, so there is a lot of power to cool down. 
as you can see, you definitely do need that 330 watt uh, power brick. So to conclude, even though it gets hot when overclocked, it uh, maintains high speeds, unlike the Skylake Alienware. So if you are happy with temperatures in the mid high 90s, I say go get it. Alienware sells this for about 2,300, which I think is very reasonable. Uh, and if you are confident in doing a repaste, I think it's a definite buy. At stock speeds, it is fine. And at that price level, it's still good value. But I do think the $2,000 Acer Predator 17X I reviewed is still better value. Now, thanks for your time. If you'd like to donate to this channel, I do have a PayPal button on my front uh, page. Please uh, like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.